And welcome back to Channel 9 Live here at Build 2014. I'm Brian Keller, and I'm joined once again by two of my friends from the engineering team. We have Brett Grinslade. Okay. Am I saying that right? I've never actually asked you how to pronounce your yeah, name. Yeah, that's right. Okay. You, you, got it, you got it right. Thanks, Brian. And, and, uh, and Aaron Bjork. Aaron Bjork. Bjork. You got it right <laughs> the first time. So, Aaron, you've been on Channel 9 before. You work on the Visual Studio Online team still, you last I checked. Yep. Still gainfully employed. Yep, and, still here. Uh, and, Brett, you're, this is your first time at Channel 9, so welcome. Thank you. And uh, you work on the Application Insights team, which is part of the whole Visual Studio Online collection of services. Before we get into Application Insights, I want to kind of get a recap. Since Aaron was last on the show back in the November time frame, you guys have been shipping every three weeks to the service. Let's just go through a rundown of some of the things that, that, uh, that people might have noticed in their Visual Studio Online accounts recently. Sure. I mean, maybe first let's start off with what is Visual Studio Online? Yeah, it's a great question because I, I think sometimes we, we gloss over that and people aren't always yeah. aware of what it is. So I like to describe Visual Studio Online as a set of um, cloud-based services that uh, complement your development experience inside Visual Studio. So it's everything from source control to work item management, your backlogs, build services, and now things like load testing, uh, telemetry data, insights, and all that. So if you're writing code in Visual Studio, Visual Studio Online is um, you know, everything else you need, essentially, to have a great experience. Great, great. And so I know that today we announced uh, this thing called general availability. What does that really mean in Microsoft par parlance? Yeah. General availability really means it's, it's really, really ready for real this time. Okay. So, uh, you know, this isn't a preview. This isn't a limited preview. This isn't um, available. This is out there and available. And what it means is um, we're going to start charging for it. Um, so if you exceed some of the, the limits or the boundaries, of uh, the five free users, you're going to have to start paying. Uh, it means we've now got a financially backed SLA, so we're going to have some guarantees around uptime and uh, very good uptime, um, things like that. And we're also going to give people um, some options, like uh, exporting their data if they've used the service for a while and they've decided it's not for them. Uh, allowing them to opt out and things like that. Right, so let's talk about that quickly because I do know that there are some uh, constraints on what that export really means. It's not it's not an export from now until forever, but That's it's, right. can you tell me what the... Yeah, we've got the export window open for about six weeks right now. Okay. Uh, I think that's the plan and that's, a, that's kind of a rough time frame. But the idea is that if you can uh, take what you've got on, on Visual Studio Online today and export it to Team Foundation Server on premises, mm -hmm. uh, running Team Foundation Server 2013 Update 2. Okay. And the reason we've got that window in place is that uh, the schemas for both of these things are sort of constantly changing. Sure. And we want to provide that opportunity, and then we're going to uh, shut the door for a while, and then uh, take the schemas. Uh, both and let them sort of move freely, and then we'll re-enable um, it again at another point. Okay, so. excellent. So let's talk about some of the, the new capabilities that, um, that we saw in the service since we saw you last. In fact, maybe we can just go down the list here for, for folks that uh, are following along at home. Um, if you go to visualstudio.com and click on the news feed, it's actually really easy to see the feature timeline to understand exactly when new features are, are showing up. I mean, I, I use the service every day, and I'm always surprised to go in and be like, oh, wow, you guys added some new thing, or you fixed this bug. So you guys are always just continuously adding new things. Yeah, it's, I think this is one of the really fun aspects of working on a service. We have this saying internally that um, sort of developer satisfaction is directly correlated to the amount of time it takes between writing code and deploying code. Nice. And we're in a point now where um, you can be checking in a piece of code on uh, a Friday, and a week later it could be showing up live on the service. So. Uh, we've gone from what I say, it used to take us about three years to you know, deliver a product, now down to we're updating it every three weeks. So it's really exciting. Um, like you pointed out, up on the, uh, the news page, you can head up there and, and really we've got chronicled all the updates that we do. Uh, and what we, if you kind of look at this page, what you see is on the left-hand side, you see a, a timeline of when it went live on Visual Studio Online. And then on the right-hand column, you see uh, some numbers there that represent which update of uh, Team Foundation server it's in. So if we took an example here, on September 9th, uh, 2013 here, we uh, released something called work item charting. That's the ability to take a, a simple work item query and build some charts out of it. And then that's now available in the 2013 product. And so you can see that here. Now later up, uh, just up a couple rows, you see that we added an option uh, what, just three weeks later for color picking in those charts. Written by one of the interns on the team, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, written by That's one awesome. of the interns. Yeah, That's got to so. be so cool to be an intern working on a summer project and then go back to school and be like, That's my code yeah, running I on Microsoft servers. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. So, 
Um, so, uh, and you can see that then that was made available actually uh, yesterday mm -hmm. because it came available in uh, 2013 update two, right. which we announced yesterday. Right. But, but you can see that's a great example of where that code went live on Visual Studio Online back in late September of mm -hmm. last year. And here it is, uh, are we in April already? And here it is now showing up in the on-premises product. Right. That's probably about the extreme of the difference that you'll see. Uh, about six months, but our target usually is uh, usually about three to four months. We want to be updating the on-premises product with that's great. all that value. So, that's great. Yeah, that's cool. So if we if we actually switch over, I want to show the audience the uh, the beautiful dashboards that you're enabling here, uh, because you know you you did mention work item charts. You mentioned some of these other things like work item tags, and I think that you guys have really done a great job of kind of bringing those to the forefront of your everyday experience, so that you don't have to go digging for these things, but they're kind of at your fingertips. Can you walk us through? Some some of the enhancements here. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So this is a, a team project homepage, and like you said, it, it really represents sort of a dashboard of activity. And what we've done here is enabled you to, to pin different artifacts to your homepage to make sure that the things that you care about um, are right there in front and center. So you can see I've got a couple of different tiles pinned. I've got one here for this project called Top Gun Live, and it says there's been five recent changes. If I click into that, I'll see the different change sets is, that have uh, gone in in the last couple days. And I was commenting to you earlier, I made a couple styling changes and some perf updates just earlier this afternoon in, in a half hour of free time that I had. Um, uh, other kind of things here that you see is I've got a work item query here. I've got no open impediments. That's kind of nice. And then what we were hi highlighting before is this idea of a work item chart. And this is just a simple chart that shows me the Democrats um, are controlling the House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> showing me that. You could, you could call this a political chart, yes. I guess, if you wanted. Uh, but what it does, it just shows me on my backlog, how much stuff do I have that are um, product backlog items and actual requirements, and how many things here are actually bugs. And it looks like I've got, if I can squint and see it, I've got 31 active bugs there, so it looks like I've got some work to some do. Some work to do. But you could, you could pivot on uh, the, the breakdown of severity of bugs or yeah, this, uh, customer requests versus you know, whatever, right? This stuff is trivial to change. So yeah. you come in here, uh, here's the query that's driving it. I come over to my chart, and you can see here it is, and, and I can just go into this thing and edit it, and I can um, make it about whatever I want. I could make it by assigned to. I should probably add some of this stuff to your backlog, actually, so you could help <laughs> me with it, because it's all assigned to me. And like we were commenting earlier, if we didn't want this uh, chart to look quite so political, we could come in and, and just adjust the colors and yeah, click this, OK. This... And then once you've done that, it's going to be updated uh, live. Right, uh, if you were on the logged dashboard. in as yourself and not me. Oh, yeah, I'm logged in yeah. to see you, and I haven't <laughs> given you permission to do this, which exactly. is probably yeah. a good thing. Yeah. So you guys are doing a lot with UI here and, and really trying to help teams make these experiences their, uh, their own, right? And I, I, I just got done interviewing Vishal and Jonah, and they were, they were talking about the new Microsoft Azure portal and yeah. how they're pulling in data from Visual Studio Online and helping to make teams uh, you know, give it their own dashboard as well. Um, clearly these are two separate offerings from Microsoft that kind of deliver the same thing, but I know you guys are working together and yeah. you have long-term plans to uh, kind of co-evolve those, those offerings. Can you give us some hints about the future? I, I think that's just a great way to put it. I would say, uh, yeah, Vishal and Jonah, who were up here before, they're sort of my new best friends. Uh, <laughs> we spend a lot of time together, and essentially what we're doing is we're taking um, the services that you get here in Visual Studio Online, and we're bringing them directly into that Azure portal. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going to see backlog experiences, you're going to see uh, repo experiences, you're going to see code diffing experiences, all showing up directly in the Azure portal. And I think that's just something that you'll continue to see come closer and closer together over time. Um, I don't have timelines. It'll, uh, as, as usual, it'll be ready when it's ready. But know that we're working actively on that stuff, and, and we're really excited about where it's going, because as we've sort of talked about in the keynotes and in the various breakout sessions, this is really bringing it all together. Right. You know, this is bringing your operations, uh, your product management, your, your development services all together into a single place, and, and we're excited about that. Well, that's actually a good segue into uh, introducing Application Insights, because you mentioned operations, and you mentioned continuously pushing out every three weeks and kind of learning from your customers and from your users about how they want you to evolve services over time, and that actually is a real sweet spot for Application Insights. So I want to talk to Brett, because that's really your baby, right? You're all about telemetry yeah. and usage and everything else. But before we dive into that, high level, how would you explain application insights to your mom? 
Yeah, at a high level, um, I don't. Uh, I told my mom that's what I work on in my day job. <laughs> uh, the um, at, at a high level, what we really try to do is help you understand if your application is available, if it's performing, and if it's succeeding. So the, the, we use those kind of catchphrases to help kind of help you understand the kind of work. Available to us means that it's your it, customers are able to use your service or your client application. Mm -hmm. uh, we know how important that is if they can't you know, make the application work or can't get to it on the internet. It, is it online? You yeah, know, it, just really basic the stuff, The simplest right? question, yeah, is yeah. It, if it's like a website, is it up and, and running? That, right. And that's, that's critical you know, it's the, when you need to waken up in the middle of the night and that's why we have features like alerting and different things that help you understand is the application available. And for performing, it's a pretty broad range. It's really ranges from you know, basic issues with your application that can be exceptions or performance problems. It can also be deep diagnostics. You can do things like we can catch uh, memory dumps uh, in production. You can get uh, eye trace files out of your production service. So it's, it's really about the whole range of, you know, is your application really running the way you intend it to run? You know, does it have the performance you need? Is it uh, operating correctly? And then the final bucket, you know, you, your code can be running perfectly and your site can be up or your application can be running, you know, on the store. Um, but are your customers achieving the goals that you have set out for yourself? So you know, you're a bunch of developers and you've been paid to build this uh, product to, that does something that you know, helps your customers in some way. And you, know, you need the ability to measure, is that working to what you intend? And, and often you know, that data is used, say, back into the TFS part. You, know, you put an in Visual Studio online and you uh, change your backlog and manage your backlog based on which features customers are really using and, and, and how they're uh, really interacting with your product to help you achieve your business goals. That's great. So I wonder if you might actually take us through some of the UI for Application Insights because we did see in the Microsoft Azure portal how some of the Application Insights is starting to surface, but that's really just a limited subset of what AI offers today and what will eventually show up in the new Microsoft Azure portal. So take us through the, the current uh, Application Insights dashboard. Sure. Uh, and it's the same story that Aaron was mentioning, is that there's a bunch of functionality we're doing in the Visual Studio Online environment that's really you know, friendly to the developer process. You know, it's already integrated into your item tracking and your source control. Um, and let me just show you an example of some of the kind of things that we have in here. Uh, this application is a simple web, web application we built just to kind of demo the, the, the example here. Uh, you can see for, uh, we kind of have three major categories that you can look at pretty quickly. One is I'll dive into availability. Um, this is a really nice integration between Visual Studio Online and, um, and the Visual Studio product on your desktop. Uh, in this case, you'll see there's a bunch of red, but that's just because we have a test that's designed to fail. So this, our site's actually up, up, up and running here. These are web tests that have been created to test different parts of the application. So you can see if I drill into something like the About area, I have certain um, things that are failing. And the, the, it, the nice part about this is if you click on one of these items, you'll get the actual web test that we wrote. So there's two kind of tests that we can run, a simple ping test, but you can also do a more advanced web test. So if you're using performance testing in Visual Studio, you can take one of your web tests that you have already built, and you can upload it into the, the portal, and then we'll run that for you from different points of presence. Maybe we'll run it from Sydney, maybe we'll run it from Amsterdam, and that'll give you an idea of whether your functionality is both available over the internet and working correctly for your customer. So you can test both functionality and avail basic availability. So instead of just saying, is my uh, shopping cart page online, I can actually go to the point of saying, can I add a widget to my shopping cart, pay by credit card, and get a confirmation number? Correct, right. You can go all the way through to the end, and you can look for specific pieces of data to ensure that the application is working as intended. That's great. Uh, and then, you know, as the theme, you know, you can do something like once you've... Um, have a test like this, you can download the test results and you can open it directly in Visual Studio. Uh, not on this think, machine, you can't, but I mean, in theory in you case, could. <laughs> yeah, in this case you, you can't, but in theory you can. But you can see we even display some of the basics of the web test directly in the web UI. And so if I go back to the overview again, um, one of the other areas is uh, something like understanding your exceptions. If, you know, if you've run a production service, often it's hard to reproduce exactly the behavior your customers are getting when they're uh, encountering an error or you have a performance problem. So um, one of the, the areas of the product, and there's a talk on it later today um, that you can watch from online, is about understanding the exceptions your customers are seeing in the production environment. So um, in this case, I'm just drilled into uh, exceptions that I'm seeing in this application. Let me group them by something like, um, the, there are the exceptions, let me group them by, say, the uh, calling function here. Now you can see they're nicely grouped and you can understand exactly which controller is having which problem. 
And again, uh, the Visual Studio integration here that won't won't work in our uh, demo app here, but um, you can download the IntelliTrace file and you'll actually get all the uh, detailed data. And if you have the PDBs uh, load, load on your machine, it will actually connect to your source control, download the version of the application that you have deployed in production, um, and sync it up with that uh, shelf set, and then you'll be able to actually debug directly into that. Um, your, your code th through the trace file. That's killer. Actually, that's not my code that's failing. That's probably Aaron's code that's failing. Okay. But, well, uh, yeah. but I, I, I love this, Brett, because you know traditionally well, we've we've all been there where you get a call from operations and they say, hey, this is failing, and you're like, all right, can you go into this server and send me the log and exactly when did this fail and what user message did you see? And there's just a lot of data that you need to get to be successful as a developer to understand, a, is this a real problem, and b, yep. how do I fix the dang thing, right? Absolutely. And this brings all that to your fingertips. So that's just great, and I see you're about to click on performance counters as well. Uh, yeah, let me jump into the performance counters from a different angle here. So when, when we trap that exception, we'll also capture a bunch of performance counters, but we can go in and you can actually see other types of diagnostics, like the metrics of your current running service. Well, one of the reasons this is important also is that there's two kind of modes. The first mode is you're maybe troubleshooting a production issue, and it's something you're looking at directly in production right now. And so you'll want to zoom in, and uh, you know, you'll want to look like right now exactly what is happening. So I'm just using the brush here to oh, kind nice. of drill into a real low level of detail and uh, see exactly what's happening in my production site right now. And then you can switch back to something like, hey, we want to look over the last three or four days. You can see the trend of your uh, performance and your exceptions and things like that. You can choose the different time ranges. Um, another feature we've added that's just been recently added, we, we're on the same cadence for the rest of the Visual Studio Online team, and so we update every three weeks. Uh, one of the features we've just added is actually the ability to do uh, full text search against your logs. So I'll just take an example here. So what this is doing is we have just connected it to um, system.diagnostics. We also support nlog and log for net. And what this is doing is taking those logs off of our servers and loading them into the, the cloud. And then we'll just uh, index them on here for you so you can quickly search for your actual logs. So these are specific logs that we've created um, in our application. And this is uh, kind of a sample code, but you can actually see exactly which machine it was on, the IP address. And um, you, you may have a lot more complicated data that you're logging with your own, um, mm -hmm. your own trace telemetry. So it, it's a good connection between you know, you're getting your overall performance indicators, getting your detailed exceptions, and then you're getting all of your trace logging if you do the whole uh, system there. And, and that gives you an idea of the kind of thing that you can uh, analyze for understanding the behavior of your application in production. Sure. And let's talk about if, if you're a data geek and you want to throw this into HD Insight and like start running some power pivot queries against it, um, is that something that, that I can do with App Insights? It, right now, that's not something that you can do against App Insights, but this is definitely on the roadmap. The SQL team has been working with us closely on how we can align all this telemetry data that you have for them. It's the perfect scenario you know, to take this type of data, run jobs in it in HD Insight, and derive further insights and let business people and other customers just consume that through uh, Office 365 and Power BI. So it's definitely something on the roadmap, uh, not being you know, released right now. Not going to commit to dates yet. I that, understand. Right. I understand. That's uh, great. So two, two, two other things before we get into succeeding real quick is I'm going to show, this is an example of, of what the data would look like for uh, performance from your application. So one of the goals we have in Application Insights, lots of people have different telemetry they've done by hand, or you, know, you can do different kind of perf counters and stuff like that. But what we're really trying to do is curate that data for you to make it actionable. So a couple good examples here. One is that you can see that we automatically calculate the request distribution. So you, know, you, you have a bunch of requests to your server that are working just fine, and you can see you actually have a few that are uh, pretty far out of what you'd consider your typical range. You know, two or three seconds for one web request is, is a long time. Um, the other kind of thing is that we'll calculate, for example, we'll calculate your um, dependencies. In this case, we don't have, like, say, a SQL Server or other kinds of backend services. But if we did, you'd see them on this list. These would be your backend dependencies that we calculate automatically from the telemetry that derives from your application. That's great. It's, it's always nice to be able to say, hey, this is not my code. That's the database administrator's fault. You need to go talk to him, right? Why do you keep pointing at me when you uh, say hey, that? I'm sorry. Get, it's not yeah. personal. It's just uh, you know, exactly. across the table. And, and, you know, it's a typical scenario where you don't really understand sometimes exactly where in production things work differently. You go through the profiler on your desktop. Yep. Everything looks perfect. But you go into production, you have different data sets. You have different um, the calling patterns to your dependent resources are different. So um, there's a lot of differences when you're running in the in a production site. So yeah. you, have to, you, you want to be able to get that data firsthand. Absolutely. So, um, so what types of applications does this work with? 
Uh, it's a great question. So the application range, it kind of depends on the type of application. Uh, for server telemetry, it's focused on ASP.NET is the primary scenario that works very well. Mm -hmm. um, it'll work for IaaS, uh, infrastructure as a service. So if you're running a VM in Azure or other cloud providers, then that'll also work. It'll work on-prem. Um, also, it'll work for Java applications. Uh, Tomcat and Java are, are also supported. Um, as you move into client space, we currently have SDKs for um, Windows Store applications and for Windows Phone apps. Uh, we have a lot of uh, internal, there's some things have been changing at Microsoft recently, and so we have a lot of internal uh, activity going on about uh, other platforms that we're working on. So okay. nothing right. to announce right now, but can, uh, definitely direction. I'm picking up with your putting down, that sounds great. Uh, and um, so, you know, ba basically all the tiers of your application mm -hmm. can be covered, and probably I'd say the sweet spot for us is when you have device connected application going to a cloud service, that's right. definitely an area where um, it's really hard to produce all this kind of information on your own, and it's really the place where you want to start to work with this finished service that has a lot of the capability that we're talking about. What if I have a device application which is occasionally connected? So I'm using my phone, I'm maybe you know part of the day I have internet access, part of the day I don't, but I still want to get those analytics off of the way that people are interacting with my application. Is that something that App Insights can help me with? Yeah, it absolutely is a primary scenario. I, this is one of the good parts about working within Microsoft to produce a solution like this. Um, you know, we've worked very closely with the Windows team, you know, for both the phone and for the Windows Store applications. We have a very optimized kind of method of data collection and you know the, the data is stored locally if you're in a disconnected state it'll be cached on the client and then when you um, connect up to the service you, and there's different configuration options you can say only upload the data on Wi-Fi mm -hmm. or there's other there are various uh, options we've given the developer um, but you're able to upload that data from a disconnected state which is definitely a primary scenario and also we've done a lot of work to make that a very efficient process so we do background transfer and we do um, you know, it's very Batching small. And we batch up the data. It's mm -hmm. a very small amount of overhead. So from a client application perspective, there's very little uh, overhead in actually using the telemetry service. Now, what about privacy? What if I'm a user who just doesn't want to share the information about how my app is, is being used? Yeah, it's a great question. The the you know privacy is a big concern for us at Microsoft and for our customers. That there's basically two two models that we have. So one is that you, you always control whether the telemetry is sent. So the best practice that we'd recommend is have a customer improvement program and ask the customer directly, you know, what if they would like to uh, participate in that program, mm -hmm. and you have to enable that from your service. There's also uh, some global settings that we honor in the Windows environment around. Um, the, the use of um, the anonymous advertising IDs and things like that. So if you set those uh, policies in your Windows machine, then um, our SDK will pick that up automatically. Got it, got it, that's great. Um, so, so you mentioned uh, some of the different app types that, that are supported, and I know that um, with the Microsoft Azure preview, that's primarily focused on Azure websites. Now right. I can start to get some of the application insights data right within Microsoft Azure now. Correct. Um, what, what data is available to me d today, and, and maybe what's coming in the future? Yeah, in Azure websites, you currently can get uh, basic information about uh, kind of environmental information and page view type of information. So you can see the number of users that have come to your site, how many sessions they've had. You can see which browsers people are using. Um, those are the types of things that you can get uh, right away. You can get a little bit of performance data about how your page load times are working for your Azure website and correlate that with your logs. So th this is the kind of scenarios you can currently do in the Azure websites. If you move into VSO, we have quite a bit more uh, telemetry that you can use. We can go through all the examples I just talked about, about exceptions and uh, deep you know, trace log, you know, uh, things that you can do in that environment. And on the client telemetry, you can also do things like geo uh, and Probably the most powerful client piece uh, is the custom telemetry where you can do log your own properties with your own attributes and your own metrics, and that'll allow you to do much deeper analysis. That functionality we don't have in the new preview portal yet, but it's you know stuff that we're working through. Uh, definitely available today in the Azure uh, in the Visual Studio Online portal. Okay, so for the Microsoft Azure portal, I've I've, I've plugged that URL. It's portal.azure.com. That's right. People can get started with Azure websites and use use App Insights from there. Absolutely. Um, where do people go to get started with kind of everything else that we talked about? Yeah, you just go to visualstudio.com, and if you don't have a Visual Studio Online account. 
then you can just sign up right there. There's a, a free level of service Aaron has talked about. Even though it's generally available, there's a free level of service. The Application Insights is a preview feature within okay. the overall product. Uh, that you know, product's also freely available. Uh, it's available today to all customers now, and uh, it had been behind a preview, uh, an invite code before. You had to be a available. friend of a friend of a friend who had the code to get in, right? Exactly, so now right. it's open to everyone. Right. Now it's open to everyone. I, I think it's important, too, to just point out, it really is easy to get started with this thing. I mean, I, I'm not on the Application Insights team, but I've used it, and you literally just a couple of clicks and away you go, and you start getting this telemetry data. So it's it's fun and it's easy to try out. So you know, encourage everybody out there to do it and, and start giving that feedback. And, you know? and, and if I'm not mistaken, we use it ourselves to instrument Visual Studio Online and Skype and a lot of these other services at Microsoft to help make them better. Yeah, absolutely. We don't use it everywhere right now, but mm -hmm. we're, we're starting to make that transition for sure. That's great. So, yeah. That's great. Well, Brett, I know you have a breakout session here at Build to get ready for. Yeah, a few minutes. Aaron, I know you have a bunch of bugs to go fix. So thanks for spending some time with us here on Channel 9. And uh, we'll be back to some more great Build content coming up later.